for road safety campaigners, the Rio Plus 20 Summit was a bit of a breakthrough because it was the first time ever that road safety was included in an international development summit. And thanks to the Russian government who uh, led, the, led the charge at the UN, uh, road safety was included in the communique. So um, I think several months of, of advocacy and lobbying paid off and we managed to achieve the result we were looking for. I think Rio 20 can be a start point for engaging governments, for engaging communities, for engaging the civil society organizations, but this is an important issue that needs to be on the development agenda. It's not simply a health issue, it is a health and development issue. It's the poor that have the greatest burden around injury and premature death and disability related to road and traffic safety. So how can we make this a health equity issue? A lot of organisations were making voluntary commitments at Rio. It wasn't just a, a meeting of government leaders, it was civil society and um, business and international institutions coming together to develop new partnerships to try and solve sustainable development problems together. A group of 12 organisations under the umbrella of the Zanani Mandela campaign made a joint commitment to work to protect children in cities around the world from road traffic injuries. Um, we were joined by organisations like the UN Environment Programme, like Embark, the, the World Resource Institute, uh, by the FIA Foundation, by Make Road Safe campaign, all coming together to commit resources and time and staff resource to working over the next year in the run-up to the UN Global Road Safety Week to implement projects and to campaign for safer roads for children around the world. It's well known that, uh, that child pedestrians are the highest group, uh, the, the most at-risk group in sub-Saharan Africa, and it's in contrast to the developed world where the vast majority of injuries are to um, children in cars. In Africa, it's children and it's child pedestrians. Ninety-three percent of children injured on Tanzania's roads, for instance, are child pedestrians, and the situation's absolutely out of control. And We know what the solutions to this problem are, and it's just a matter of, of scaling up what works and implementing it. If you want to keep your city walkable and public transport oriented, which are the solutions that the Rio framework is looking for, then we have to completely rethink the future design, the physical design of the city that integrates the safety requirement of the walker and the public transport user. And it should be designed in such a way that the walkers and the cyclists and the public transport users, they get their segregated and their safe space. So the commitment we've made at Rio Plus 20 will combine advocacy through the Tsunami Mandela campaign, which is campaigning for recognition that children should have safe routes to school, that we need to have better road design, reduce speed limits around schools, all these kinds of issues that in many countries and many cities are being ignored. Combine this advocacy with actual practical projects on the ground in Africa and in Asia and in Latin America to demonstrate what can be achieved when you do implement safer road design, when you empower communities to call for action on road safety and when you deliver to local communities and local schools the tools so that they can themselves develop road safety plans. It's really simple when it comes to road infrastructure. From all of the road assessments that we've done around the world so far, which extend to 70 countries now, 84% of the roads where pedestrians are present have no footpath. That's crazy. Um, you don't need IRAP to be able to tell you to put footpaths in where pedestrians are present. But you can see there's a huge opportunity for us to just in that one area of pedestrian safety focus on mass action around the world. Let's provide footpaths where pedestrians are. And next, next year's United Nations Road Safety Week is focused on the safety of pedestrians. What a great opportunity to just make that change across one user group. I think it is a tragedy to, to lose a child. It's a tragedy for anybody to lose a child, especially somebody whose life is cut off at such an early age. And it's even more tragic when you think that it could have been prevented. Um, because when you say goodbye to your child in the morning, you want to make sure that the child comes back again at night. That child could be walking 
and you want to make sure that in terms of pedestrian crossings it's safe. The child could be like maybe on a bike and you want to make sure that the crash helmets are worn. We have to save at least five million lives, which we can do. The big push on this issue about making roads safe is so important. We need to listen to the children themselves who want action on this issue. And then at a global level, the Rio 20 meeting, we need to agree frameworks that then galvanise people at national level to take actions. But the other important thing to come out of Rio was um, agreement that there will be new sustainable development goals which are going to be agreed by the international community over the next couple of years. And it's absolutely vital that a transport is included as one of those sustainable development goals. So the focus of our campaigning and our advocacy over the next couple of years is going to be trying to build on the platform that Rio Plus 20 has given us and demanding that the international community include sustainable transport and road safety as one of the sustainable development goals going forward from 2015.